On the Rubik's Cube, an algorithm is any sequence of turns used to achieve a goal. This could be something as simple as flipping a piece during the cross or making the cross on the top face, to something as advanced as solving the entire last layer at once. Algorithms are written like this, where each letter tells you which face to turn clockwise, or counterclockwise if there's a prime on it, or turn it twice if there's a two. In the CFOP speed solving method, the last two steps are entirely solved using algorithms. Now, quick side note, the word algorithm outside of cubing is more supposed to mean steps that may change depending on the situation, so not exactly a set sequence of steps, and a more appropriate word would be something like sequence, but in cubing we like to use big words to impress people because for some reason solving a cube is not impressive enough. The earlier stage of solving the cube is more intuitive, and that means you can figure it out as you're solving it. For example, to solve the first two layers, I need the red and blue pieces in here, which they are currently over here. I can put them together with three moves, and then I can move it to the front and put it in here with three moves. Now, these are all things I can figure out on the spot because they are very short and don't really count as algorithms. But then on the last layer, I just see this pattern and I know what to do. And then I see this pattern and I do this. Those are just pre-memorized sequences of moves, or algorithms, that I have just done. But I've just memorized these. Do I even understand these algorithms? Uh, yes. Sometimes. Okay, how do algorithms actually work? That's what I'm here to talk about. There are many types of algorithms, but we're gonna start with one, and that's called the commutator. The basic idea for a commutator is there are three pieces you have to solve that move in a cycle, and you can solve these all with an algorithm that is actually quite intuitive. You find one move that can solve one of the pieces into the right spot, then you put another piece into here also in a way so that it looks solved compared to its surroundings. So this is the first move, then this one goes here like this, and there it is. Then you undo the first move and undo that second sequence. That actually solves it, and what the commutator means is that you are doing one thing, another thing, and then the reverse of each of those. The commutator idea is used in plenty of algorithms. You may not have realized that this one is simply a three-corner swap because you're usually thinking about making yellow on top, but it is a commutator. It's just done like this so that the finger tricks are better. Another type of algorithm is a conjugate. This algorithm solves the J permutation, which means these two and these two have to swap with each other. So when you do it, they end up in each other's spots. So in this case, we need to swap these two and these two. So all we have to do to swap these is put them in the same spot as where we solved a J perm. So we can just move these like this. One, two, three, four. Now they are here. Now if you do a J perm to solve these, and then undo those four moves, one, two, three, four, then you will solve that case. That is a conjugate because we're doing a setup move into an algorithm and then undoing the setup move. That allows us to solve a variety of cases using the same base algorithm. Another type of algorithm is destroy and repair. You may have seen this algorithm before and how it works is like this. The first three moves take out this F2L pair. One, two, three. So what we've done is we've destroyed F2L, but we're going to repair it, just obviously not the same way because that would do nothing, but we're gonna repair it a different way. And how that's done is by moving the pair further away and then moving it all back in like this. And that actually changes what the top looks like. In this case, it solved it. And here you can solve this OLL case to make it all yellow on top by taking out this pair, then putting it in a different way. In this case, this way. You can get pretty crazy with the idea of destroy and repair, and it doesn't just apply to the F2L slot. Sometimes you can mess up multiple F2L slots and then try to put them back together, and sometimes what you're destroying is OLL, and then you're solving it with a different OLL case. Okay, so you can see why break and repair doesn't destroy the previous step, because you then go and repair it. But why does doing this sequence of two OLLs lead to solving this PLL case specifically? How does it all work? Well, here's the thing, I don't know. I mean, I can do the algorithm really slowly and trace over all the pieces for you and show you where they all ended up, but that's not really an explanation, is it? It's a proof that the algorithm works, but it doesn't give you like a satisfying reason why it works. My brain is a human brain, and so is yours, and we can't comprehend what is actually happening after this many moves. 
A lot of our algorithms are found through just trying stuff on the cube and seeing what works, but a lot of them are also found through the help of computers. And actually, computers don't even really understand what's going on. A lot of the time, it's just trial and error. So if a computer is just doing trial and error, and that's how they discover these, then how are we ever supposed to understand what's going on? I can understand how a few moves work, but with each move that you add to an algorithm, there are exponentially more possibilities to how many cases can show up as a result. There are 43 quintillion possible positions on the Rubik's Cube, and if that number is hard to visualize in terms of people, it would be like if every person on Earth had their own Earth. That's how many positions are possible on the Rubik's Cube, and how many moves does it take to reach that many positions? You only need a maximum of 20. All that is to say that the complexity of a Rubik's Cube as you go up in number of moves is simply too much for a human brain to completely understand. I fully understand commutators, but it took me a while to grasp it. And even when I move up to challenges where I solve bigger cubes in weird ways, I still use commutators because I can rely on them as I completely understand how they work. But when it comes to something like break and repair, I understand the concept of why this produces useful algorithms, but I don't understand any of what happens in that algorithm. So sometimes you'll still see me use this technique, such as on square one or skew, but that's only because I had no clue what was going on, I just tried break and repair, and I tried it enough times that it created a useful algorithm. But I don't actually understand what I'm doing when I do use it. Basically, you will never fully understand all of the algorithms that you're using. The way that they work is simply too complex for the human brain to grasp. So then, why? Why do cubers learn these algorithms and then try and impress other people by their solving? Isn't that a bit fake? We don't really know what's going on, we're just memorizing it. Speed cubing is less about the cube and more about the speed. And if all you think that means is move your fingers really, really fast, that doesn't matter if you're doing way too many moves for something that can be solved in fewer moves. Or if you do a cube rotation to force easier finger tricks rather than just using more creative finger tricks that allow you to solve the case faster. You also want to avoid something as simple as changing your grip on the cube as that is time spent not turning. Make sure that while you're doing one algorithm, you can watch the fast moving pieces on another part of the cube so you can begin the next algorithm without having to pause. Oh, and were you trying to figure out where each piece goes to know what algorithm to do? Uh, well, just look at the colors on the front and that should be enough to tell you what to do, right? So, do cubers just memorize algorithms without even understanding what they do? Yes, for part of the solve. And memorization is only one of many aspects. Just memorizing the algorithm is not what's going to make you fast. You do have to memorize some stuff, and it may be a little painful, but that's how you gain access to an entire new world of possibilities. 